everyone, Yasas Kekalo Sirsata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're going to be making a delicious and easy 30 minute meal that's going to be on the table in no time. You can serve it as a main course with lots of sides. They can be quesadillas and they could be tacos, it could be both. But I love making these. I usually make lots of Mediterranean food, but every time I want to switch it up, I serve these and my kids love them. They just keep on asking for more, they taste so good. But like I said, this can be served as a main course or you can serve this as an appetizer. Let's get started. I'm gonna begin by making the meat sauce. So in my skillet over here, I'm just gonna cook up an onion that I finally chopped with a little bit of oil. Just cook it over medium heat until it's nice and soft and golden. That takes about eight minutes or so. Once the onion is cooked, we're gonna add six garlic cloves that have been grated. I keep garlic already grated and frozen in Ziploc bags and it's nice and flat, so I'm gonna take a big chunk of it put it in and just warm it through until it melts into the onions. Now I'm gonna go in and add the ground beef. Two pounds of ground beef is going in. I'm just gonna cook this over medium heat until most of the pinkness goes away and then it's time to season with some salt, freshly cracked black pepper, a heaping teaspoon of sweet paprika. You can add smoked if you like the flavor. I'm also gonna add some crushed red pepper flakes for heat, as much or as little as you like a teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of ground coriander. I'm also gonna add one to two teaspoons of dried thyme and a few splashes of Worcestershire sauce. Mix this all together and just cook this over medium heat, medium high heat until the meat is fully cooked. It's gonna take about 10, 15 minutes or so. Continue to mix it and once it looks like this, it's ready. So while the meat was cooking, I went ahead and I just made a quick little salad. I just chopped up half an onion, a bell pepper, lots of tomatoes. I like using grape tomatoes and I also added an avocado to it with lots of lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil and some salt and I just mixed it all up. If you want to, you can take the seeds out of your favorite spicy chili like a serrano or jalapeno chop that up and put it in there, but lots of lime is key in this. And I also finally chopped some cilantro and I added it to the salad. If you're not a fan of cilantro, you can go with parsley. So let's put them all together. So now I have these corn tortillas. I love using corn tortillas for this. It just tastes really good. I'm gonna spread these out on my cutting board and I'll sprinkle the tops with some shredded cheese. I love buying this Mexican cheese, which is a combination of different kinds of cheddar. Just put a layer of that on top of the tortillas and then we're gonna to top it off with that ground beef, then a little bit more cheese and then top it off with another tortilla. Kind of press it down to help everything stick all together. And then we're gonna cook this over a cast iron skillet. I have it heating over medium heat and I'll also add a tiny bit of olive oil to it just to help everything get a little bit crispy. If you don't even wanna add the olive oil to the pan, you could just brush the backside of the tortillas with the oil and then when you flip them over you could brush a little bit on the other side as well. You're just going to cook these three to four minutes per side until they get crispy. If you like them a little bit softer you just warm them through gently and just until that cheese melts on both sides and everything's going to hold together and stick together. We like them a little bit on the crispier side. You can cut these into fours and just serve them almost like chips and use them to, to scoop up that salad. You can add some sauce to this. I'm, I'm using shawarma, shawarma sauce because I had it in the fridge, but sour cream is great in this too or whatever spicy sauces you have on hand. You could fold them in half and put the salad on top in between just like a taco. These are so delicious and so easy to make. But anyway, it's time for the taste test. Oh my goodness. I love it when the corn tortillas get a little bit crispy. They taste like nachos to me. I always have this ground beef mixture in my refrigerator. I make it at least once a week because I do different things with it. These tacos, just like you saw, they're so simple and easy to make. Hi guys, yasas que calo si to another episode of Dimitra Dishes. Today we're making a quick and easy yet elegant cod that's gonna be baked in a harissa sauce. It's gonna have a crunchy breadcrumb topping. It is perfect for date night because it's elegant and it comes together in under an hour, but that makes it also really nice for a dinner party because you can just multiply this and make it in a big pan for so many people or make something special for your family on any weeknight. It's up to you, your kitchen, your rules. Anyway, let's get started. All right, so normally I would use one big nine by 13 inch baking pan, but because I wanted to show you that this is a perfect date night meal or like a meal for two, um, I'm gonna use two of these small pie pans just so that way 
It just looks, it just makes for a really pretty presentation. And just so that way you can see that. I'm gonna start by slicing two bell peppers. You just wanna get it into strips. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. And then I have a red onion and I'm also gonna slice into like half moons and put half in one pan and half in the other. Uh, you don't have to use a red onion. If you have shallots, you can use shallots. You can use a regular yellow onion. It's gonna uh, sweeten up when it roasts in the oven anyway. But this is what I had, so this is what I'm using. And then I have a potato. You can peel it if you want, or you could leave it just the way it is. You can use two potatoes, but I'm also gonna slice this into really thin half moons, just so that way they cook quickly, just as quick as the other vegetables do. So I'm just gonna drizzle some olive oil over the veggies, maybe like two tablespoons or so. And I'm gonna season with some salt, black pepper, and I'm gonna sprinkle some dried thyme on top. You can do dried oregano, either one will do. If you have a sprig of rosemary, you could drop that in there. Just toss everything all together. And these are gonna go into a preheated 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 20, 25 minutes or until they're fork tender. So it takes about 20, 25 minutes for the vegetables to soften up in the oven. You wanna make sure that the potatoes especially are fork tender. You can keep them in there a little bit longer. Again, it all depends on your oven. But as soon as they're fork tender, they're ready because they are gonna continue to bake with the codfish. So let me set these aside right now. So I have four little fillets of cod over here. You can use whatever white fish you want. You could even use salmon for this recipe if you prefer. So they're washed and patted dry and ready to go. But before we, before we make the seasoning or the marinade, I'm going to season them with salt and pepper on both sides. And I should have done this step first before I even put the veggies in the oven, but I forgot. <laughs> it helps the marinade kind of flavor the fish even more. So in a little mixing bowl, I'm gonna put about four tablespoons of yogurt. This is plain whole milk yogurt. I lost count. <laughs> this is either four or five, doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, if you, don't, if you wanna leave this dairy free, you can leave the yogurt out, but the yogurt really does help um, the, the harissa stick to the fish. And then I'm using store-bought harissa. This is my favorite brand. If you can find it, it, it'll be in the Middle Eastern section of your supermarket, maybe in the Mediterranean section. I love it because it's not too spicy and it just has so much flavor. I do have a recipe um, and I teach you how to make your own at home. It's super simple to make. It's basically a combination of roasted sweet red peppers, some spicy peppers, a little bit of garlic, olive oil, and some warm spices. Super simple to make. And it is packed with flavor. I love to use this on chicken, fish, even lamb. So I'm gonna mix this all together and it just smells so good. And you can put as much of the harissa as you want on it, on the fish. And like I said, you can leave the yogurt out if you don't want yogurt in your marinade and just put straight up harissa all over the fish. Okay, now I'm just gonna put the fish with the marinade over the veggies. We'll do two in each baking pan. And you don't wanna let any of this goodness go to waste. And because I love it so much, I'm actually gonna put a little scant tablespoon over each one of the fish fillets because this stuff is so yummy. I like to buy the mild harissa and when I'm making it, I like to make it mild just because it can get super spicy. So now I have some capers here. Uh, these are store bought. You can use olives instead. Just uh, chop up a few olives, take their pits out and just sprinkle them inside the pan. These are gonna add a nice salty kick, a little, you know, it just kind of wakes up the dish. Okay, so that's that. Now we're just gonna make the topping. This would be delicious just as it is, but I have some breadcrumbs over here. I use panko breadcrumbs that are unseasoned. This is not sponsored, you guys, by any of these companies, but this is just the random brand that they sold at the supermarket. They're just plain, unseasoned panko breadcrumbs. They happen to be a little more uh, crunchy than the regular Italian breadcrumbs. And then I have a stick, which is four ounces of butter. I use salted butter and I'm just gonna mix this all up. I melted it. This is gonna flavor um, the breadcrumbs. I'm gonna put a, few, a little bit more in there. You need about 100 grams, and we're gonna season them with just a little pinch of salt. 
I'll put some black pepper in here. And I'm using thyme, but you, you, you can use oregano instead. And then you're just gonna put the breadcrumbs on top of each filet of fish. And if you wanna leave this gluten-free or um, low carb, just leave the breadcrumbs off. You're just not gonna have that nice crunchy topping. So my oven is still set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna set this on the center rack so that way they can bake for about 15 or 20 minutes. Once the panko is golden and the fish is fully cooked, I'll take it out. I'm also gonna sprinkle, before I serve it, I'm gonna sprinkle some scallions on top. You can do parsley instead and then it'll be ready to serve. All right, so the fish came out of the oven. It was ready in 15 minutes. It's ready to be served as a complete meal as it is because you have your veggies, even some potatoes. But I would serve this with a side salad, maybe some Mediterranean rice pilaf. If you want to serve some couscous with it, be my guest. Whatever you want, let me know how you're serving it in the comment section down below. But the veg veggies are perfectly caramelized and cooked and the potatoes are tender. And look how the fish just flakes and falls apart. Time to take a taste. Mmm. So many layers of flavor. The harissa adds a light kick to it. Those breadcrumbs are so buttery and crisp. The whole thing is amazing, delicious, just perfect for date night, perfect for your family. I am bringing to you another delicious meal that's gonna be ready in 60 minutes. This one is one of those meals that the whole family will love, especially the kids. From start to finish, it's kid friendly. It is so delicious. We're gonna be making fried chicken cutlets. We're gonna be serving it with pizza pasta. What could be wrong with that? And then we're gonna also make a nice salad and some dessert. The whole thing is gonna be ready in under an hour like we just said, and it's delicious for a party or for a weeknight meal. Let's get started with the pasta. I have a pot of water that's boiling. It's already come to a boil. To it, I'm gonna add some salt and a pound of pasta. Today I'm using penne regatta, but you can use your favorite pasta, whatever you have. And I'm just gonna let this boil for about 10 minutes or so. That's how long it takes for it to be a little bit undercooked. You do not wanna overcook this because it's gonna bake for 45 minutes in the oven. So 10 minutes should be good enough. And in the meantime, just make sure your oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna move on as soon as the pasta is done. So once the pasta is done, I just boiled mine for 10 minutes like I said. You wanna take it out and put it in a nine by 13 inch baking dish. I have this round one here. It's a little bit bigger than a nine by 13 inch, but that's because I really do like uh, a, lot of a, a lot of a cheese topping on top. So it could be like a pizza, but nine by 13 works because I do that all the time. Now I'm gonna add, um, first of all, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil and just a tiny pinch of salt to the, to the pasta. And I'm gonna add a little bit of oregano, dried oregano. Now, if you're using a regular oregano from the supermarket that's not Greek or Mexican, then you can go a little bit heavy on it and it'll be fine. But Greek and Mexican oregano tends to be very um, strong, so go a little bit easy with that. We're just gonna give this a nice mix. And now the easiest part of all, two cans of pasta sauce. If you can your own, if you grow your own tomatoes in the summertime and you make pasta sauce, definitely use that. But this is a nice shortcut. Um, get your favorite pasta sauce and put it in there. And I like this pasta to be super saucy, so I do put two cans in here. A little pinch of crushed red pepper flakes for heat. If you don't want it, leave it out. A little bit of black pepper. You could put some basil in here, in here too. Dried basil has all that pizza flavor, so basil would be nice. Just mix everything up and give it a taste to make sure that it doesn't need any more salt or pepper or anything like that. Mm. The sauce is usually flavored perfect, so it doesn't need anything else. Now for the best part, the cheese. So I have some mozzarella over here. I like to buy mozzarella in big blocks. If you've been watching this show for a while, you've seen me do it. I cut the block into rectangles or little chunks like this, and then I freeze some and I leave some in my refrigerator. We go through lots and lots of mozzarella. If you buy your shredded, then all you have to do is just put lots of mozzarella in here. I'm not gonna shred this right now. I'm just gonna cut this into little bite-sized pieces. I like little chunks of mozzarella throughout this uh, dish.
There's never really enough cheese in this, but that looks like a good amount. Now, as if that's not enough, I'm gonna also put a layer of shredded Gouda on top of this, but you can definitely leave it with more shredded mozzarella on top. Gouda is a little bit tangy, it melts beautifully. It just adds so much good flavor. And this, at this, in this recipe, you can make it with your favorite ingredients. So I go with Gouda because lots of pizzerias in Greece um, use Gouda instead of mozzarella. And I grew up eating it and it tastes delicious to me. So that's the reason I stick with the Gouda cheese. And sometimes I do use mozzarella if that's all I have. But you can use your favorite cheese. Gruyere would be nice. Um, if you want to mix in some cheddar, it would be good too. And if you want to make this a complete meal and you have some meat sauce in your freezer, if you meal prep, I've done a video on that, you can throw some meat sauce in here too, mix it up, and it'll be just, you won't need anything else with it other than a salad. So this looks good to me the way it is. So you want to cover it with foil and bake it for 45 minutes in a preheated 425 degrees Fahrenheit oven. The center rack is best. It's gonna, after 45 minutes, uncover it and then let it cook for about 10 more minutes so the cheese gets nice and golden and bubbly. And I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Now we're gonna move on to making the chicken. So instead of starting with the chicken, the chicken is gonna be done in really in no time. And we have time for that. I'm gonna make the dessert. So for a dessert, we're making a Nutella puff pastry. A Nutella puff pastry. It's almost gonna be like a cookie or a twist or both. So you wanna um, thaw out some puff pastry. The best way to do it, if you're planning ahead, just put it in your refrigerator overnight. It's usually sold frozen and I keep it in my freezer and I always have a box in there because it is my go-to pastry for if I wanna make something really quickly for guests or for the family. So if you didn't um, thaw it out in the, in the refrigerator overnight, then leave it on the counter for about 30 minutes and it should be good to go. It is easier to work with when it's cold though. So if you can, Thaw it out for 30 minutes and then refrigerate it while you're getting everything done. It'll be very easy to work with. Lightly flour your work surface and just roll the puff pastry out a tiny bit, about an inch on all sides should be good enough. Just a little bit. You want it to retain its puffiness, so don't roll it too thin. That looks about right. Nothing fancy. Now I have some uh, chocolate hazelnut spread. You can use Nutella, whatever your favorite chocolate hazelnut spread is. If you want to get a little bit more gourmet, you can spread some ganache on it. If you have people that are not chocolate lovers in your family, then jam would be great. Your favorite jam or preserves in here would be perfect. And you're just going to want to spread uh, some Nutella on half of, on one side of the puff pastry. Resist the urge to make a very thick layer because then it's going to get messy. That looks about right. I put it on <laughs> a little more than half of it, but that's fine. Some of, some of them will be extra chocolatey, I guess. Now, either with a cookie cutter, or what is it called? A rolling cutter, a pizza cutter, <laughs> or a knife, go ahead and cut out strips. This one will stay a little bit on the fatter side. You can, get a, you can be a little bit more precise than I am. And then go ahead and twist each one of the strips. Now, you can totally leave these like this and create little uh, twists, but if you want to get extra fancy, you can roll them up to have little twisty cookies or pastries. And then put them on a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. And don't worry about getting chocolate marks on them. So I'm gonna continue twisting these. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other sheet of puff pastry. Then I'm gonna pop them in the freezer for about 10 minutes so that way they retain their shape. And then uh, 20 minutes before the pasta comes out, I'm gonna put these in the oven and they're gonna bake for about 12 minutes or until they're puffy and golden, 12 to 15 minutes. I'll tell you exactly how long it took, but um, I'm gonna continue doing this and then we're gonna move on to making the chicken. So we've got two recipes out of the way. The cookies are, gonna, are chilling in the freezer until we're ready to use them. Now I have some chicken breast over here. Now what I did was I just rinsed them. Some people don't like to rinse chicken and if you're one of them, you don't have to rinse it, no problem. It's just a habit of mine, so I do it and then I pat it dry with some paper towels. Now these are some big chicken breasts. So what I'm gonna do, so that way they cook evenly and easier, I'm just gonna cut them into strips. You can also slice them in half or butterfly them, so that way you have thinner cutlets. But I like, I like for them to be in strips. I feel like they're easier to fry that way and 
They're fun to serve in little strips. Now, if you already have chicken tenders at home, then you can skip this whole part. Or if you have chicken cutlets, obviously they'll be thin enough to fry and you could skip this part again. So I cut the chicken in as even strips as I could. It's of course not gonna be perfect. And the secret to really delicious food is to season every step of the way. So I'm gonna season the front and the back of these chicken strips with some salt and some black pepper. Okay, so the chicken is seasoned. Now it's time to make the egg wash. So for the egg wash, I'm gonna put four eggs in this little uh, pie pan over here, this baking pan. You can put them in anything you want, but I find that a nice something that's really nice and shallow is really easy to work with. And to that, I'm gonna add some milk, about four tablespoons or so, which is like a quarter cup. And then we need to season this as well with some salt and some black pepper. And then I'm just gonna whisk this up. In the meantime, I have a cast iron skillet that's heating over medium heat, medium high almost, uh, so it can get really nice and hot. I put some uh, light olive oil in there. You can do grapeseed oil or whatever vegetable oil that doesn't have too much flavor and has a high smoking point. And now our breadcrumb mixture, which is where all of the crispiness and the flavor is gonna come. I'm using some panko breadcrumbs because I love their texture, but you can use regular unseasoned breadcrumbs. Just make sure whatever you're starting with is unseasoned because we're adding in all of the flavor. To that, I'm gonna add some shredded Parmesan cheese, some dried oregano, a little bit of salt. We're not gonna add too much salt because Parmesan cheese does tend to be salty. Some cumin powder, a little pinch of crushed red pepper flakes, they're optional. And I like to use granulated garlic powder for lots of flavor. We'll do two to three teaspoons. And we'll also put a little bit of black pepper in this. And that's it. You can leave out what you don't like, add in what you do like, and season the breadcrumbs to, the, to suit your taste. You could even leave them really simple with just the Parmesan cheese, a little bit of salt, and, uh, and the breadcrumbs. That will do too. So you want to take one piece of chicken at a time and you dip it in the egg mixture. And just get that excess egg mixture off. This is going to be like the glue that's going to help all of this seasoning stick and the breadcrumbs, and then roll it and toss it into the breadcrumb mixture and just leave it in here until you have a few ready. So you wanna make sure the oil is nice and hot at about 350 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Fry the chicken cutlets or the chicken strips on both sides until they're nice and golden and the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That should take about 10 minutes or so, but it's not about the time, more about the doneness of the chicken. It all depends on the thickness. I'll show you, I'm gonna continue frying these, breading them, all that good stuff. Of course, I'm gonna put them on a tray that's lined with paper towels to absorb the excess oil that, you know, that it absorbs when frying. And as soon as they're done, we're gonna put it all together and make the salad and we're gonna have a meal ready. So the pasta is ready. The chicken was done in about, it took 10 minutes for each batch to fry. If you wanna bake them in the oven, you can follow my uh, chicken Parmesan with pesto recipe. I'll post that in the links down below. And then the pastry is also ready, the Nutella and puff pastry little swirls. Those are all done. Now the only thing that's left is a salad. I think we went a little bit over than an hour in this recipe, but it's gonna be totally worth it. I guess if you wanna leave out the salad, you could and just put a nice green salad with your favorite dressing on top and call it a day. But this marulo salata, which is a green Greek salad, is really simple and quick and delicious. You usually need some romaine lettuce for this, but I had some spring mix, so that's what I'm using. So you just wanna roughly chop it. And then I'm just gonna put it in a big bowl. And then I have some parsley that I'm gonna finely chop. And we're gonna add the parsley into the salad bowl. Then I have some scallions. I think these are too many, so we'll just do three for now. And I'm going all the way down to the whites. And those are gonna also go into the salad bowl. 
Last ingredient, I have some cucumbers that I've already peeled and I'm just gonna roughly chop them. And those are also gonna go into the salad bowl. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of dill. If you have fresh dill, you can go and use fresh, but I'm putting a heaping teaspoon of dried dill in this, a little bit of salt. And then I have some red wine vinegar and some really good quality cold pressed extra virgin Greek olive oil. Just toss everything all together and that's it. Salad is ready. You can put some mint in here if you want to, some dried oregano, but it's gonna be perfect just the way it is. So there you have it, a chicken and pasta dinner that the whole family will love. This is perfect party food, like we said before, perfect for entertaining for a crowd, but extra special for a nice weeknight meal for your family. It is time to take a bite. So we're gonna start off with the chicken. And the chicken should be nice and crispy on the outside and it should still be soft and juicy on the inside. Mm. That would make some killer chicken sandwiches for the next day. Crispy on the outside, so flavorful, perfectly cooked on the inside. Like I said, it's worth every minute frying it because it just gets, there's nothing like fried chicken. But if you want a healthy, he healthier alternative, you could definitely bake it by following the recipe that I'm going to post down below. Now it's time to taste the pasta. And the pasta should be stringy and cheesy, and I'm going to have it with a little bite of salad. Mmm. Tastes just like a pizza. The salad is nice and refreshing with all of those herbs. You guys are gonna love this one. It's definitely gonna, it's gonna make it to your table at least once a week, I'll tell you that. And of course, there should always be room for dessert. Time to take a bite of these delicious Nutella twists, we'll call them, Nutella Puff, Nutella puff Pastry Twists. Mm. Oh my God. Perfectly flaky, crispy on the outside. The chocolate makes it extra special, of course. You can use whatever fillings you like to make the same exact pastry in a variety of flavors. We're gonna be making deconstructed lacano dolmades, which are also known as cabbage rolls. I'm making them in a red sauce, but you can definitely leave the tomato sauce out of this and give it, a, give it more of a lemony twist to it. I'll also put those directions in the written blog post. This is, these are so good. These are like lazy cabbage rolls. All of the flavors of cabbage rolls with a quarter of the work, maybe even less. It comes together in under an hour and it is so comforting and very delicious as always. Let's get started. So we're gonna begin by finely chopping a large onion and then we're gonna get it into the pan with about a quarter of a cup of olive oil. You could use less olive oil if, if your meat is a little bit on the fatty side and sprinkle in a little bit of salt. If you want to add carrots to this recipe, you could also dice up one or two carrots and add them in with the onion. Cook it over medium heat for about eight to 10 minutes or until the onion is nice and soft and golden. In the meantime, we're gonna take a big head of green cabbage and we're just gonna roughly chop it with a knife into slices. Once the onions are ready, go ahead and add the garlic. I have four garlic cloves that I've grated and I'm just gonna add them in and let them warm through for a few seconds and then the beef is going in. I have ground beef here. This is 85% lean with just a little bit of fat in it and it's gonna go in and I'm just gonna break it up and brown it just a little bit until that redness goes away and that's just gonna take a few minutes. Then I'm gonna season with salt and pepper and add in the remaining ingredients. So I'm gonna add one 15 ounce can of tomatoes. If you wanna leave this without the tomatoes, just leave them out, no problem. These tomatoes are unseasoned because we're gonna add all of the seasoning ourselves. I usually like to add a little pinch of sugar when I'm adding canned tomato sauce because it's a little bit acidic, 
but the cabbage is slightly sweet and so are the onions, so we don't need any sugar at this point. We're gonna cook this over medium heat for about 15 or 20 minutes or until the sauce thickens and the meat is fully cooked. At that point, you're gonna go in and you're gonna add the cabbage a little bit at a time. Now, if you're starting this off in a big pot and the cabbage all fits in there, go ahead and throw all of that cabbage in, but make sure that you season it with salt and pepper. You want the dish to be very well seasoned so that way there's a lot of flavor and salt is magical, you guys. Do not skimp it. So go ahead and add the cabbage. If it doesn't all fit at once, just add it as it wilts. And trust me, it looks like a lot of cabbage, but it is gonna cook down to almost nothing. You're gonna cook this for about 20 or 30 minutes over medium, medium high heat, or until the cabbage wilts down and all of the juices that are released dry up so that way you have a nice thick sauce. Give it a nice mix and then at this point you can taste it and adjust the seasoning, add a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. If you wanna add some crushed red pepper flakes for heat, those would be really nice too. And then I like to squeeze lots of fresh lemon juice on this, the juice of one or two lemons, the, the lemonier the better in my book, but once the cabbage and the meat is all cooked, I just squeeze lots of lemon juice on top. If you wanna add some fresh parsley that's finely chopped for a little bit of freshness, you could go ahead and do that. If you wanna add a little bit more earthiness to it, you could add a teaspoon of dried oregano or dried thyme, take it off of the heat and it is ready to be served. You could serve this over white rice. I did cook some white rice in my rice cooker. It's so easy to do that. I didn't record it. It's basically equal amounts of rice and water. So if you're doing a cup of rice, you would add a cup of water, a teaspoon of salt, and one or two tablespoons of olive oil. You mix it all up and you press white rice and it's done. <laughs> I'm gonna serve this over rice later on to my family, but it also tastes good with a nice side salad and maybe some toasted bread to soak up those delicious juices. It's time for the taste test. Mmm. Cabbage rolls have to be one of my all-time favorite foods. And this has all of the flavor of the cabbage roll. None of the work. So easy. My mom always makes cabbage rolls for me every time I'm visiting her in New York. And I love them. It's just so comforting, so delicious. I'm going to teach you how to make a quick and easy weeknight meal that comes together in one pan. It's so delicious. It combines two classic uh, Greek recipes lemony chicken and also spanakorizo, which is a spinach and rice pilaf. The two combined just make the most delicious one skillet meal. Before we get started, you wanna make sure that your oven is preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit because we're gonna brown the chicken in the oven instead of on the stove top. Later on, we're gonna reduce it to 400, so keep it in mind, you don't wanna burn anything. But browning chicken in the oven is my new favorite thing to do because it, you just, don't have a mess to clean up afterwards. Let's get started. Okay, the best cut of chicken to use in this recipe is bone-in chicken thighs and drumsticks. I just love this cut because it stays juicy. I leave the skin on, but if you wanna take it off, that's fine as well. I'm just gonna put the marinade on this now. So I've juiced two lemons. You can start with one. If you want it more lemony, you can just, I guess, serve it with lemon wedges. We love it lemony around here. So the juice of two lemons went in. So that's about a quarter of a cup of juice, maybe a tiny bit more. I have five garlic cloves that I've grated. I'm gonna add that in there. Lots of salt and black pepper. Heaping teaspoon of oregano. And a teaspoon of ground coriander. And one more and. Just a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Toss it all together so that way the chicken is coated. Perfect. So in my pan over here, I have an onion that's cooking. I just went ahead and I finely chopped it. It's not even really finely chopped, to be honest. It was just roughly chopped. And I put it in the skillet with a little bit of olive oil and a pinch of salt. And while I was marinating the chicken, this was just cooking over medium heat. So the onion did begin to get a little bit soft. It's been cooking for about five minutes, not even. I'm not gonna cook this too much because I used to brown the chicken first and then do the onion step but I find that putting it on top of the onions right now with all the marinade and then popping it in the oven, not only does it lend more and better flavor, but it also reduces the mess that's made on the stove from browning chicken. I hate browning chicken on the stove. So once the chicken is in the pan, you're gonna put it in the oven with the onions. I started off on the center rack and it's gonna cook in there at 450 degrees 
for 20 minutes, then I'm going to move it to the top and I'm going to turn the broiler element on for the next five or seven minutes so that way the chicken can get beautiful color on top. Once that's done, it's still not going to be fully cooked, but you're going to take the pan out of the oven and make sure that you wrap the handle with either an oven mitt or with a kitchen towel so you don't accidentally touch it and burn your hand, but carefully take the chicken out of the pan and put it in a plate and set it aside. We're going to put it back in the pan afterwards, but we're going to add the spinach now. We're going to put the skillet back onto the stove top over medium high heat and I'm going to add the spinach. I have two pounds of spinach. I'm going to add a little bit at a time with some salt and pepper on each batch that's going to go in and I'm going to cook each batch until it wilts and I'm going to keep adding the spinach with a little bit of salt and pepper until it's all wilted. The spinach is almost ready. It's pretty much done and it does release a lot of juice. There was already some stock in here from the chicken while it was browning in the oven. That's perfect. It's going to have tons of flavor. I have two cups of long grain white rice here that I've just rinsed several times under cool running water and I let it soak for about 15 minutes and then drained the excess water. You can use basmati rice if that's what you like, your favorite rice. Brown rice will not work because the time that it takes is much longer than white rice. So if you're using brown rice, you really have to adjust the time, the cooking time that is. So I'm going to add the rice to it with two teaspoons of salt. I'm also going to add some dried dill. You could do one to two teaspoons. If you don't like dill or if you have fresh dill, that's even better. But if you don't like dill, you could leave it out and add another teaspoon of oregano to this. That will work too. Give it a nice mix. There's already lots of pepper in here with the spinach. Salt, pepper and spinach is a great combination. Just mix it all up. Mm, it's already smelling so good. I have two cups of chicken stock here and I think I'm pushing it with the two cups of rice. I usually make one and a half cups of rice. Let's see how it goes in this pan. Next, I'm just going to add all the chicken back to the pan with whatever juices are in this plate. So once you see it bubbling on all sides, then you can just turn the heat off and cover it carefully with foil. This does come with a glass lid. Glass has shattered in the oven before, so I'm kind of careful about that. So now the pan is going to go right back into the oven. Make sure that it's reduced, the temperature is reduced to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Cover the pan carefully with some foil so that way the chicken doesn't overcook. And it's going to cook in the oven covered for about 25-30 minutes. Then carefully remove the foil and let it cook uncovered for another 15 minutes. When it comes out of the oven, you're just going to, you can take the, the chicken off of the rice and just gently fluff it with a big spatula or with a fork. You can slice some lemon wedges and if you have some feta and olives, it goes so well with this, along with a nice Greek salad too. This is just so delicious. The house smells amazing. I definitely like to squeeze some more lemon juice on my plate. I'll leave it up to you. And if you have some tzatziki, that's chef's kiss. <laughs> Time for the taste test. Mmm. Oh my goodness. That rice almost becomes creamy. It's not mushed or anything like that, but it has such a beautiful texture. The chicken is nice and lemony, but also juicy and so flavorful with that garlic and oregano marinade. The spinach just melts in your mouth. So good. I'm going to teach you how to make a quick and easy Greek lemony chicken and rice skillet. Everything comes together in one pan. It's a delicious crowd pleaser that the whole family will love. And I, as always, very simple to make with just basic ingredients and tons of flavor. Let's get started. So I'm using about two and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I trimmed off as much of the fat as I could, the excess fat, because there's lots of fat on the chicken thighs and fat is flavor, so I did not take all of it off. It keeps them nice and juicy. That's why I'm using thighs. If you're using chicken breast, it's going to come out a little dry, so I do recommend the boneless, skinless chicken thighs, or you can use the bone-in chicken thighs, or even drumsticks will work for this. Just go ahead and season them with salt and pepper on both sides and just toss everything all together. This recipe moves really quickly, so you want to have all of the ingredients ready. So you're going to need to rinse and soak the rice before you begin. So you can salt and pepper the chicken and then take two cups of basmati rice or your favorite long grain rice, put it in a bowl and rinse it a few times under cold running water. Four or five times is what I do and then I let it soak in cold water so that way that excess starch will be released and the rice will be nice 
and light once you cook it. Just set it aside and then go ahead and finely chop an onion, a large onion. I didn't finely chop it. I just roughly chopped it, but it's going to work for this recipe, so don't worry about it. Heat a large skillet over medium-high heat. And I like to line at least part of my stove top with aluminum foil, the part where the oil is going to splatter all over because it just... I just hate cleaning the stove top up. So aluminum foil is the way to go. I reuse it until it's dirty enough to not reuse again. I just fold it up and keep it in a cabinet or in a drawer and it just it's just a lifesaver. So the oil is nice and hot. I'm gonna add the chicken and I'm gonna cook it in a few batches, about two minutes on each side, two to three minutes until it's nice and golden. Then I'm gonna transfer it onto a plate and we're gonna move on to the next step. I also like to use this screen guard thingy. It really helps with preventing a lot of mess. So I have an onion that I finely chopped. I didn't really finely chop it. I sort of roughly chopped it, but that's good enough. I'm gonna add it to the skillet right now. And I did turn the heat off. I'm gonna keep the heat off for a few seconds just because the pan has gotten so hot. And I don't want the onions to brown too quickly. I want them to cook and get nice and soft. So after a few seconds, I'm going to turn the heat back on about medium and let the onions cook for about eight minutes or so or until they're nice and soft and golden. So now I'm gonna add five garlic cloves that I've grated. I'm just gonna warm them through until they're fragrant. I've drained all of the water from the rice and I'm gonna add the rice to the pan along with two cups of broth. This is chicken broth. Two teaspoons of salt. A little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. A teaspoon of dried oregano. A teaspoon of ground coriander seeds. Now I'm gonna add all of the chicken back right over the rice and all of the juices. And I forgot to add a quarter of a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. The mixture is gonna come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm just gonna turn the heat off from underneath and it's gonna go straight into the oven. But before we do that, I'm gonna to top the chicken with some lemon slices. This looks pretty, plus they're gonna get nice and roasted in the oven. You don't have to add too many. So once the rice and the liquid all comes to a boil, it's gonna go in the oven. You can definitely finish this off on the stovetop. If say your oven doesn't work or you don't wanna heat up your house, what you would do on the stovetop, I'll give you the oven directions in just a moment, but you would just bring it to a boil, then reduce the heat to a very low or a simmer, cover the pot with the lid and let it cook for about 15 to 18 minutes or until the rice is fully cooked, then you would go in and gently fluff everything up all together. You can take the chicken out and then fluff everything all together and it's ready. You would just garnish it with parsley and it's ready to be served. But I'm gonna do this in the oven because it gets more flavor. All of the edges get a little bit crispy. The lemon slices are gonna get roasted. It's just gonna be so good. So preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and you're gonna put the pan on the center center rack um, uncovered, you don't cover it, and let it, let it bake in there for 30 minutes. Once it comes out, it's ready to be served. I like to sprinkle it with some finely chopped fresh parsley, and that's it. This meal is so delicious. It's gonna be lemony. You're gonna have all of the flavors of the herbs that are in there. That garlic is so good together. I think everyone is gonna love this. Let me give it a taste test. Mmm. So good. I love cooking with chicken thigh meat because it stays really moist and juicy. You really can't overcook it, and that's why I love it. If you're going to use breast, you're going to have uh, you're going to have trouble. It's going to get really not, really dry. So don't use breast for this recipe. Use e either, like I said, quarters or drumsticks or the chicken thighs with the bone in. All of them will work. So much flavor. That lemon is really shining through and just freshening up the rice. It's so good. I would even add a little more lemon juice. Definitely serve this with some tzatziki, some feta cheese and olives. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a quick and easy 30 minute sheet pan meal using salmon and lemony potatoes. The salmon is also gonna be lemony. So delicious, the whole family is gonna love this one. Let's get started. We're gonna begin by making the leather lemon or dressing. And in this picture over here, I have six garlic cloves that are grated. I'll add half a cup of olive oil, half a cup of fresh lemon juice to it or the juice of two lemons, doesn't have to be a full half cup, that's gonna be actually a little bit too much. I would stay at about a quarter to a third of a cup and taste it and add more if necessary. Then I'll add a teaspoon or two of mustard, I love using Dijon mustard. Whisk everything all together and then set it aside. 
while we prepare our potatoes. So I have two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. You can use russet potatoes for this. Peel them and then cut them into wedges. Put them on a baking tray and drizzle half of the marinade, the leather lemon or marinade over the top. Season them with some salt and black pepper and some dried oregano and just toss everything all together. These are gonna bake in a preheated 425 degree oven for about 25 minutes or until they're fork tender. Once they come out of the oven, make some space for the fish. I have a big fillet of salmon. This is about two and a half pounds here. And this is gonna go in the center, nestled in between the potatoes. I'll pour the remaining leather lemon or marinade over the top, season the fish with some salt, freshly cracked black pepper, and some dried oregano. Spread the dressing evenly so it covers the whole fish. And this is gonna go back in the oven and bake for about 15 minutes or until the fish is fully cooked. Once it comes out of the oven, finally chop some fresh dill and sprinkle it on top and it's ready to serve. So that's it, just like that, this meal is gonna be ready on the table from start to finish in 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more, a few minutes more because you're gonna be prepping while you're doing this. You could serve this with a nice Greek salad or even a lajano salata, which is a green cabbage salad. You can toast some bread to soak up that delicious sauce. It's so good. I went a little bit heavy with the sauce because I love leather lemon dressing, but you can cut it in half if you're counting calories. It smells delicious. I'm sure it's gonna taste delicious. Let's do the taste test. And I love when potatoes are perfectly cooked and they mash when you just put a fork to them. Mm. Oh my goodness. Lemony potatoes with anything is my absolute favorite. If you're not a fan of salmon, it's really healthy for you and I love it. First of all, I use wild salmon. That's very important. If you guys do your own research, you'll find out that that farm-raised salmon is something that you don't want to put in your body. <laughs> so get wild salmon if you can. If you have Costco nearby, they sell it for a really good price. But all that aside, if you're not a fan of salmon, you could do this with cod. You could do this with another white fish. Just keep an eye on the temperature because some fish cook uh, faster than others. Today we're going to be making harissa chicken bowls with the halal cart yellow rice. So easy to make, comes together in under an hour. It's perfect if you want to serve this at a barbecue or a dinner party or if you're low on time and you want to get food on the table for dinner. This is a perfect recipe because it's easy to make. Let's get started. We're going to begin making the marinade in the bowl. So in the bowl, I'll just add a quarter of a cup of olive oil. 3-4 tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, a tablespoon of honey, and harissa. I'm going to use this whole little jar. I love this brand because it's never bitter. It has the perfect amount of spice, and I like to buy the mild harissa sauce. You can make your own. I have a recipe on my website if you wanted to make it at home. But always taste as you go because some harissa is a little bit bitter, and it's too spicy. So you don't want to make this too spicy. I'm also going to add about five garlic cloves that have been grated. Then I'll add the chicken to the bowl. I'm using boneless, skinless chicken tenders here, but you can use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And I am doubling the recipe. I know you guys hate it when I do that, but when I go over the ingredients, I'll go over them as the recipe calls for. So for two pounds, even though I'm using four pounds. Season it with salt. For two pounds of chicken, I like to add one heaping teaspoon of salt. I'll also add two teaspoons of ground cumin, a heaping teaspoon of ground coriander, a heaping teaspoon of sweet paprika. I'm not a huge fan of smoked paprika, but if you like it, you can use it instead of that. Mix everything all together so that way the chicken is coated in all of that flavor, and you could set it aside at room temperature while we prepare the rice. So I'm using two cups of Carolina rice. You can use basmati rice if you like. You make sure that you rinse it really well and you let it soak in cold water for about 10 to 15 minutes before you use it and then drain that water out so that way the, most of the starch is gone. In a pot over here, I'm gonna heat up some olive oil and I'll add two to three grated garlic cloves. Just heat them through until they're warm through and fragrant. Next, I'm gonna add the rice, one and a half teaspoons of salt, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, and one teaspoon of ground cumin. And then I like to cook this in chicken broth, but you can use water instead if you don't have chicken broth or maybe even vegetable broth too. But the chicken broth adds so much flavor. Two and a half cups of chicken broth are gonna go in. 
Give everything a mix and bring this to a boil. Once the rice comes to a boil, reduce the heat to a low, cover the pot, and let this simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the rice is fully cooked. Fluff everything up and set it aside until you're ready to serve it. I'm also gonna make a delicious white sauce that goes with this. And I'm doubling this up too because we love this sauce and we eat it with everything. So you're gonna use one to two garlic cloves that have been grated, half a cup of Greek yogurt, a quarter a cup of really good quality mayonnaise, some freshly cracked black pepper, a tablespoon of white vinegar. I'm using white balsamic because it has more flavor. You can use lemon juice instead. And then I finally chop some fresh dill and I'll add it in here, mix it all up and the sauce is ready. This keeps fresh in the fridge for about a week and it tastes good in everything, so make extra. So now it's time to cook the chicken. I love to cook this in the air fryer, but this works well over a barbecue grill. You could even cook it over a cast iron skillet on the stove top, but the air fryer is just nice and easy doesn't make a mess and it cooks the chicken perfectly. I'm gonna cook the chicken in two to three batches so that way I don't overcrowd the basket. All the chicken is gonna go in and it's gonna cook at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna flip the chicken over halfway through and I'm also gonna check it once the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The chicken is ready. You can overcook chicken breast, so check the temperature after about 15 minutes of cooking. And if it's reached 165 degrees Fahrenheit, take it out. If you're using boneless, skinless chicken thighs, they take a little bit longer to cook. If you have an instant read thermometer, meat thermometer, it's the perfect time to use it. So that way you don't overcook the chicken. Once the chicken is ready, you can put your bowls together and it's ready to serve. If you prep during the week, it's a great recipe to have on hand. The sauce too, I cannot tell, we can just put it on everything and eat it. Time for the taste test. Mm. There's so much flavor in that marinade. It tastes so good. It's literally permeated through the chicken. You get the smoky sweet flavors of the roasted peppers that are in the harissa sauce. It's not too spicy. Some harissa sauces tend to be a little bit bitter and overly smoky. So I love this brand. It's the Minna brand. It's the best harissa that I've had other than the homemade recipe that I have online. That one is really good too. Everyone loves a great burger, but these chopped cheese sandwiches are a million times better. You're gonna have to make these and you will definitely believe me once you do. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna begin by making the sriracha mayo. This is the sauce. So in a bowl over here, I'm just gonna add some really good quality mayo and sriracha sauce. You could add as much sriracha as you like, mix it all up and set it aside. Then it's time to slice up the lettuce. So I'm using romaine lettuce. You can use iceberg lettuce. Slice it up really thin and then you're gonna wash it in a bowl. Then I like to use a salad spinner for this whole thing. You wanna get the salad really dry. So get the lettuce out of the water and put it in the little basket and spin it a couple of times until it's nice and dry and have it ready to go. Now we're gonna prepare the onion and pepper mixture. I have an onion here, I'm just gonna slice it in half and then into not too thin, not too thick slices. I want them to have a little bit of texture. I'm gonna do the same thing with the pepper. I have a red bell pepper, but you, you can use any color that you like, it doesn't matter. Just slice it up so it can be the same size and thickness of the onions. These are going to go into a cast iron skillet that's heating over medium heat with a little bit of olive oil and a pinch of salt. And they're gonna cook until they begin to soften. Once they're ready, transfer them to a bowl. Now it's time to get the meat cooking. So I have about four ounces of ground beef. I like to use beef that has a little bit of fat in it. At least 15% is good so that way it's nice and juicy. Put it in the really hot pan. You want the heat to be on medium high right now. Cast iron skillets do tend to get really hot. So if it does start to heat up too much and starts to overbrown the meat, you can reduce the temperature to a medium, but don't go too low. Otherwise it'll kind of steam the meat. Flatten it out a bit and season it with some salt, freshly ground black pepper, some garlic powder, and a little bit of ground coriander. You're gonna cook the beef until it starts to brown on one side and that takes about three or four minutes, depending on you know the strength of your stove top. Flip the beef over and then season it with a little bit of salt and start to chop it up. Let it cook for about 30 seconds and then flip it over one more time. It'll still be slightly pink. Try not to overcook it. And at this point, you're gonna top it with your favorite cheese. Today, I'm using shredded cheddar, but I've used Munster cheese before and American cheese. Use your favorite cheese on top that melts beautifully and chop the meat up and let the cheese melt. You can reduce the heat a little bit right now and it's gonna take about 
two minutes for the cheese to melt. Once it's nice and melty, you can put your sandwich all together. So I'm using these longer buns today. I have made these sandwiches on hamburger buns, but they're easier to handle in the long buns. And I just toasted them. And now I'm gonna spread some sriracha mayo on both sides. You could hit it with a little bit of ketchup, top it with that shredded lettuce, those delicious sauteed onions and peppers. I also like to add some pickled jalapeno peppers on top. It adds some more flavor and a little kick of heat. And then the chopped beef and cheese goes on top. This sandwich is so delicious. Just take a look at it. It's so juicy and good. If you want to, of course, you can add your more toppings in this, like sliced tomatoes and avocados, but it is ready to serve. These smell amazing, and they became popular in New York. If you haven't already heard them, you can Google up the famous New York chopped cheese sandwich. It looks really good, but I think I made it even better, even though I've never tried it. <laughs> my kids go to New York and they try all these fancy things. I eat my mom's cooking. So <laughs> they tell me about it, and I recreate it at home according to how they described it. In my opinion, this tastes better than anything you're going to have outside. It's going to cost you much less money, and it's going to be cleaner and healthier, too, because you made it at home and with love. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a delicious way that I found to make to roast chicken. And it's perfect if you meal prep and you wanna have chicken on hand to throw on top of your favorite salad, to make wraps with it. There's just so many ways to enjoy this. It's delicious and so simple to make. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna begin with two whole chickens. I'm using two because if you're meal prepping, might as well make a bigger batch because this chicken just disappears. So I'm just gonna spatchcock the chicken and you just take either a really sharp knife or kitchen scissors and cut down one side of the spine. Once you get through that, then you're just gonna go down the breastbone and cut through it. You can put, apply a little bit of pressure until you hear that snap and that's gonna help the chicken lay flat. Flip them over and cut some slices through the breast and the thighs so that way the flavor can kind of penetrate and then go ahead and transfer them to two baking trays. You can totally bake these on one baking tray, but what I found is they don't roast as evenly and the baking tray ends up with a lot of liquid in there. So I do this in two baking trays. I try to minimize cleanup, but trust me when I tell you, use the second baking tray. It takes a few extra minutes, but the chicken will be tastier. So we're gonna begin with the back side, and I'm just gonna season the back with some salt and freshly cracked black pepper, flip it over, breast side up, and then we're gonna drizzle some olive oil on top about two teaspoons of salt or to your liking, some freshly cracked black pepper, a teaspoon of sweet paprika. I'm not a fan of the smoky paprika in this, but if you like it, by all means use it. One teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of ground cumin, two teaspoons of dried oregano, and two teaspoons of garlic powder. And these are going to bake in the oven at 425 degrees for 45 to 55 minutes or until a meat thermometer registers 165 degrees Fahrenheit in the thickest part. I'm putting them in one oven and then I'll just flip the trays. I'll put the tray that's in the middle rack on the top and then the top in the middle rack halfway through cooking so that way the chicken cooks evenly. Once it comes out of the oven, let it cool completely so that way it's easy to handle. And then you're just gonna remove the skin from the chicken, shred up all of the chicken meat, and I like to toss it in the pan juices, and then transfer it into a big mixing bowl. At this point, I like to drizzle some balsamic vinegar over this. If you're using two chickens like I am, maybe about a quarter cup or so, or to your taste, to your liking. I thinly slice some scallions. These are just the green parts. The white parts are a little bit stronger, so I just save those for cooking. And just toss everything together, give it a taste. If it needs some more salt, you could add it at this point, but it's ready to use in your favorite recipe. Just like that, the chicken is ready and it's time for the taste test. It's amazing how something with such simple flavor and such a minimal amount of effort creates such delicious chicken. I mean, you're gonna be floored when you try this. If you've already tried my cheese sliders that are made with my tiro cafeteri dip, you'll know that this chicken is really, really good. The balsamic adds a tiny bit of sweetness and, and it also wakes it up because anytime you add vinegar to something, it just rounds out the flavors and just tastes so much better. The scallions are so simple, yet you can definitely taste that mild onion flavor that they leave. I love to use this to make wraps for the kids. I've also made a butter bean salad and used this chicken to put on top. 
Today we're going to be making an easy sheet pan salmon dinner with salmon and broccoli. It's going to be an Asian style meal that's going to be ready in like 30 minutes or less. Let's get started. So I have a salmon filet here that's about one and a half pounds. It does have the skin on the bottom. We're going to start by making the marinade. So you need about three or four garlic cloves. Make sure that you grate them. I have a little bit left in this big plastic Ziploc bag. I like to buy a big pack of peeled garlic cloves and then I just puree them in my food processor as soon as I get them home. And then I just transfer them into freezer safe bags. I keep them really thin so that way they're just, I can just break off pieces as I need them and they thaw out quickly. It's a lifesaver, it saves a lot of time and it also saves money when you buy things in bulk. So to the garlic cloves over here, I'm gonna add some coco minos. So I like it when there's a lot of sauce to this. I love that Asian sauce. And I use coco minos instead of soy sauce. You can use soy sauce if you want, but for me, this is healthier. My body doesn't do well with soy. So I'm gonna use almost a whole cup of this. Sounds like a lot, but like I said, we like lots of sauce. It's almost a cup, not really, not exactly a full cup, but you can do a full cup. I think I might. <laughs> Then I do three tablespoons of sriracha sauce. Really, I just eyeball it. Two to three tablespoons of sesame oil. And then I do some olive oil because I feel like the sesame oil is a little bit too strong for my liking. So two to three tablespoons of sesame oil and about two tablespoons of olive oil. You can do all olive oil, but the sesame oil really gives it that Asian flavor. Two to three tablespoons of rice vinegar, but you can use regular white vinegar. I'm also gonna add some more um, garlic powder because I feel like the garlic in there wasn't enough in the bag. And then some honey, about eight tablespoons or so. That's about, that's almost half a cup, but you can put less. And then I like to season it with a little pinch of salt, just a little bit, because I'm gonna season the fish too. Whisk that all up, and then just go ahead and pour it over the fish. And then I season the fish with a little bit of salt too. I know some people think that cocoa aminos is a substitute for salt, but it really isn't. There's not enough salt in there to bring all the flavors together. Then I have a big bag of broccoli florets. I like to use fresh broccoli for this. I feel like frozen gets a little bit soggy, so I don't do frozen. And then I hit it with a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes and some salt. Then just go ahead and toss everything all together. This is such a quick recipe to put together. You just won't believe how easy it is and it's so much healthier than getting takeout. And then just go ahead and arrange the broccoli all around the salmon. You don't have to toss it in the sauce. It's gonna absorb the sauce as it cooks in it. That looks overcrowded, but the broccoli is going to cook down. So you're gonna preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna roast in there for 20 minutes. And then after the 20 minutes is done, turn the broiler element on high, as long as the fish isn't too close to it, and let it broil for about four minutes, three or four minutes. Keep an eye on it. You want the veggies to get a little bit of a char on them. Take it out and it's gonna be ready to serve. My salmon and broccoli is ready, but definitely keep an eye on it. Sometimes four minutes might be a little too much. Mine did get a little extra charred in some spots. I'm talking about the broccoli. So keep an eye on it and take it out once it gets, you know, some charred bits, but you don't want the broccoli to burn. Definitely don't want that. This is a very impressive dinner that the whole family will love. I would serve this over some white rice with maybe a nice salad. You don't even need a salad because you have the broccoli, but it's up to you. It's so delicious. Time for the taste test. Mm. That is so good. It's also really light. A lot of times when I get Asian food from outside, it, it leaves me feeling really weighed down and heavy because they use a lot of oil, a lot of different ingredients that I normally wouldn't use at home. But this is light yet so flavorful. It's a little sweet from the honey. So much flavor in this, so delicious. The salmon just flakes and falls apart and it's tender and juicy. That broccoli soaks up the sauce. Today we're going to be making tuna stuffed bell peppers. These are so delicious because the bell peppers are roasted in the oven until they're nice and sweet. The tuna salad is super delicious. You can use this for anything, but perfect for stuffing the bell peppers with. Makes a quick and delicious weeknight meal. Let's get started. 
So we're going to begin by cutting the bell peppers in half. You could use any bell peppers that you like. I love red bell peppers, but you can use green, yellow, orange, or a combination. Cut them in half lengthwise and carefully take out the seeds. I like to leave a little bit of the stem attached because I think it looks pretty, but you can definitely take it out. Put them in a baking tray and drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the top and season them with salt and black pepper. You can toss them around a little bit so that way they're coated on all sides. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit and put your tray in there for about 20 minutes or until the peppers are roasted and tender but not falling apart. While that's happening, we're going to put together the tuna salad, which couldn't be simpler. I have three cans of tuna that's packed in oil. I like it so much better than the one that's packed in water. It's much more flavorful. If you can find it, use it. Otherwise, you can use the tuna that's stored in water and make sure to drain that and then just add some extra olive oil to it when you add it to the bowl. Go ahead and add the tuna to the bowl. I don't drain the olive oil out. It has lots of flavor. I put it in there. Then I'm going to thinly slice four or five scallions all the way down to the white parts. You want to use the whole thing, slice them as thin as possible and put them in the bowl with the tuna. You can finally slice one or two celery sticks, but I don't have any. Instead, I have celery seeds. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of celery seeds to this, adds all of the flavor. I know some people don't like celery, so that's a good little trick. If you don't like celery, you can definitely use the celery seeds instead. Then I'm going to add a heaping teaspoon or maybe a little more of capers. You can do kalamata olives or your favorite olives instead of the capers. Just go ahead and finely chop those and throw them in here. Then I'm going to make the dressing. So you're going to add as much mayo as your heart desires. Use the best quality mayo that you can get. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a tablespoon of Dijon mustard or regular mustard will do as well. The juice of half a lemon, one or two tablespoons should be enough. And then I'm going to add some freshly cracked black pepper, mix it all together, taste it. And if it needs a little more seasoning, you could go ahead and add it at this point. I rarely ever have to add salt to tuna. It just doesn't ever need it. But if yours does, you can add a little bit of salt to this. If you want to add any fresh herbs, you can finally chop some fresh parsley or dill. Dill goes really nice with this. I'm going to leave it as is. As soon as my bell peppers come out of the oven, I'm going to fill them with the tuna salad and then I'm going to top it with, with some shredded cheese. I have this Mexican blend cheese, which is just a combination of mostly cheddar, but you could use your favorite cheese that melts well. Sprinkle the top of the tuna with the cheese and then you're going to want to put it back in the oven and set the oven to the broiler setting and just keep an eye on it. As soon as the cheese is nice and bubbly and melted, it's done. All it takes is a couple of minutes, maybe three minutes or so. Take it out of the oven and it's ready to serve. The peppers are ready and I can't tell you just how delicious they smell. It just smells so good right now. The cheese is perfectly melted. Again, keep a close eye on it because they can, the cheese can go from melted to burn in a matter of a few seconds. So keep an eye on it. Once it's bubbly, has some color on there, it should look like pizza cheese. Take it out of the oven and it's ready to serve. I think you guys are going to really, really love this one. Let's bite into it. Hmm. Oh my goodness. So good. If you're minding your carbs, I'm not, but if you are, <laughs> this is perfect, you guys. It's just so filling. The sweetness of the pepper goes so well with all of the flavors that are in the tuna salad. If you get a little bite of caper, it's a beautiful surprise in your mouth. It's so good. The peppers still held their shape. They're nice and soft, but they're not falling apart, and that's how I like them. If you like them softer, go ahead and bake them a little longer before you fill them with the um, Tuna, just know that they might not be able to hold that much tuna because the longer you cook them, the flatter they're going to get. I think you guys are going to love this one. You can print out the recipe on the website, DemetriusDishes.com. Let me know how you're serving it in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.